Just one, two, or three of those physiological size brings your level of stress down very, very fast. A few years ago, when my laboratory got interested in studying stress in humans, we asked ourselves, what are the patterns of breathing that allow for the most rapid reduction in stress levels? And more importantly, what are the patterns of breathing that can be done in real time so that people can adjust their stress while they're still engaging in life, right? Life demands pressing on you. That's typically when you feel stress. So it is still true that vacation, long meditation retreats and massages or a nice drink, if you're of drinking age, still work, but they're slow and they take you offline. The physiological sigh is a pattern of breathing that was actually discovered by physiologists in the 30s and that was essentially rediscovered by Professor Jack Feldman at UCLA, a world expert in the neurobiology of respiration, and by my colleague Mark Krasno at Stanford, who studies lung function. The physiological sigh is a pattern of breathing that we all engage in in deep sleep when levels of carbon dioxide in our bloodstream get too high. We, or our dogs, you can see your dog do this, will do a double inhale followed by an extended exhale. Children or, or adults, for that matter, that are sobbing and lose their breath, so to speak, will also do a double inhale, exhale. That's the spontaneous execution of what we call the physiological sigh. The reason it works so well to relax us is because it offloads a lot of carbon dioxide all at once. And the way it works is the following. Our lungs are not just two big bags of air. We have all these little millions of sacks of air that if we were to lay them out flat, they would be... As as big as about a tennis court or so. The volume of air, therefore, and the volume of carbon dioxide that we can offload is tremendously high, except that we get stressed as carbon dioxide builds up on our bloodstream and it's kind of a double whammy, these little sacs deflate. Now, when we do a double inhale, so I'll do this now twice through my nose, or you could do this, or you could do it through your mouth, but it works best through the nose. It's inhale. And then you sneak a little bit more air in at the very end. When you do that, you reinflate those little sacs. And when you exhale, then you discard all the carbon dioxide at once. So the simple way to describe this protocol is that unless you are underwater, you do a double inhale followed by an extended exhale and you offload the maximum amount of carbon dioxide. And we found in our laboratory and other laboratories have found that just one two or three of those physiological size brings your level of stress down very, very fast. And it's a tool that, you know, you can use any time. I do hope that people will kind of watch other people or dogs as they start to relax or go down to sleep. You'll see this pattern of breathing, but again, it can be consciously driven. The other thing about breathing and the reason why exhales are so vital is the following. I know there's a lot of interest nowadays in heart rate variability. Well, most people don't realize this, but your breathing is actually driving heart rate variability. So when you inhale, this dome-shaped muscle beneath your lungs, your diaphragm actually moves down because the lungs expand, it moves down. When you do that, you create more space in the thoracic cavity and you actually, the heart gets a little bigger. It actually expands. As a consequence, blood flows more slowly through that larger volume and the brain quickly sends a signal down to the heart to speed the heart up. The short, simple version of this is inhales speed the heart up. When you exhale, the opposite is true. That dome-shaped muscle of the diaphragm moves up. The space in your thoracic cavity gets a little bit smaller. The heart gets a little bit smaller. Blood moves more quickly through that small volume, and the brain sends a signal to the heart to slow the heart down. Physicians know this as respiratory sinus arrhythmia, but this is the basis of what we call HRV, heart rate variability. And the simple way to remember this is anytime you emphasize exhales, in other words, making them longer than your inhales, you are slowing the heart rate down, you're calming your system. Anytime you emphasize inhales, you make them more vigorous or longer than your exhales, you're speeding up your heart.